Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? Ready for the big news? Excited? My name is Anna Smith. I'm the Interim Deputy Mayor for Education, and it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here to Bancroft Elementary School uh, and this beautiful building. And I know we're excited to have the ribbon cutting, but first, we're even more excited to share with you this year's results from the park tests. I have the privilege of being able to introduce uh, our champion, um, without whom our investments uh, in public education in our schools would make, uh, none of this would be possible without those. Uh, and Mayor Bowser has been a champion of students, of children, of families, and making sure that we have the resources and tools we need to support their growth and development. And so I will let my colleagues talk a lot more about uh, the park results and all of the exciting progress we're seeing across the city. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to have you join me in welcoming our mayor, Muriel Bowser. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, we are now in my favorite season of the year. And if you're in this room, it's your favorite season too, right? Back to school time in Washington, D.C. And I am uh, thrilled to be here in the beautiful Bancroft School. I haven't seen the entire school, um, but what I have seen is truly spectacular. I want to thank Principal Mola. Where's Principal Mola? Thank you, Principal Mola. Let's give him a big round of applause and the teachers and staff here at Bancroft too. You've been off site for two years? Two years or one year? Two years? They've been off site for two years. So the parents who have um, been flexible with us while this building has been under the construction uh, and also to our boys and girls who stayed focused on their work during this construction process. We're very proud that on August the 20th, which is Monday, right? Yes. First day of school? Well, first day of the non-extended year school um, in, uh, and they will be coming to their new school building. We're very proud of that. I want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Member David Gross who chairs the Council's Committee on Education. Thank you, Council Member Grasso. And I also understand that there's several members of our State Board of Education. Uh, and if they're still here, please stand to be recognized. Our host board member, Laura Wilson Phelan. Is she here? There's Laura. Thank you, Laura. Uh, our Ward 6 member, Joe Whedon and our Ward 3 member, Ruth Wattenberg. Thank you all for being here. As you know, uh, at the head table are uh, the leaders of our pu public education team, uh, and you will hear from each of them uh, in just a second. Uh, everybody is eager this time of year to see uh, what the park results show. You will remember that several years ago, are we in our third year of park? In a fourth year of Park, uh, we transitioned uh, from our old testing um, regime to the Park assessment. Uh, what we knew uh, was that we really need to see how our children are going to perform in college and career, uh, and we agreed that the Park assessment uh, was the best mechanism uh, in a test to demonstrate that. Uh, we knew it would be a tougher test, but also a better test to see what our kids were learning uh, and how they would do in college and career. And so we are proud now to present to you uh, our fourth year of results. I can share that for the third year in a row, we saw steady statewide improvement in the percentage of students who are performing at or above grade level in the park assessment. Statewide, that is good news. Thank you, Superintendent. <laughs> Statewide, compared to last year, we're up two percentage points in the Eng English language arts and two percentage points in math. Compared to where we were three years ago when we started administering the park exam, we are up eight percentage points in ELA and seven percentage points in math. So we know that this is real, meaningful improvement. 
more students are meeting the high expectations that we have set for them, uh, and more students are going on to the next grade ready to succeed. We're also seeing this improvement uh, in both sectors, in DCPS and our public charter school sector. This year, DC public schools improved from 32 to 35 percent of students scoring four or five on the ELA test, <laughs> and from 29 to 31 percent on the math assessment. In the public charter school sector, we also saw an improvement from 29 to 31 percent on the ELA assessment and from 27 to 28 percent in math. <laughs> At the same time, we see uh, a decrease in the percentage of students performing at the lowest levels, at levels one and two. So our gains on the math and ELA uh, test scores across every grade level, um, our ELA and math scores improved in subgroups as well. So it is, should be clear, and I know we state this unequivocally, while we are pleased to see growth in the right direction, uh, we all know that there's much work to do, uh, that we have to focus on all the work uh, in grade levels and teaching and curricula and in making sure that students and families have the supports that they need so that every child uh, is performing at their highest, highest potential. Uh, and we know uh, that steady investment uh, is allowing us to see this, these improvements uh, in our scores. I'm going to ask now uh, the Superintendent for Education, Hansu Kang, whose office is responsible uh, for administering the test and explaining these results. And she will be followed by the Chancellor of DC Public Schools, Amanda Alexander, uh, then followed by the Executive Director of the DC Public Charter Schools, uh, Scott Pearson. Hansu. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for those remarks and for all of your leadership on our education issues that have led to these, these really exciting results. Um, as the mayor said, PARC was an intentional decision by DC to move to an assessment that would really measure how our students are doing on real world skills such as problem solving and critical thinking. Um, and because they measure these real world skills, the results are a real indication of whether students are on track to be ready for college and careers by the time they graduate from high school. The results provide information on where our students are doing well and where they may need additional support or may need additional challenge. And we at Aussie, as well as our LEAs and schools, all use this information so that we can continue to improve over time. Just to give you all an example of what we mean when we say PARC measures real world skills and that it's a challenging test but a meaningful test, this is an example of a seventh grade English language arts question. Um, this question asks our seventh grade students to read a passage from The Count of Monte Cristo and a scene from Blessings, so real texts. And it then asks students to think about the similarities and differences between how the two authors develop the themes in each text and write an essay about that topic. You can see how if a seventh grader can succeed on this question, it then will prepare them by the time they're in college to really read full-length texts that they choose independently and be able to write meaningfully about those texts in a way that is different from the old school state assessments that we used to give. So we're proud of the gains that we're seeing because we know it's on a really rich and meaningful bar that gives us good information about where our students are in their readiness. PARC has five different performance levels, and levels four and five show that students are meeting or exceeding expectations and therefore are on track to succeed in college and careers. And so throughout this presentation, we focus mainly on the percentage of students scoring at levels four and five on the assessment. And so as the mayor said, we are seeing that scores are up across almost all grades and subjects and across both DCPS and our public charter schools. We see especially strong improvement in middle grades, which is very exciting given how challenging this time can be. 
Um, we are seeing improvements on, among almost all major groups of students across subjects. And we're, while we're very proud of these gains, particularly because of what they mean for what our students and our teachers have achieved, we also know that overall results remain lower than we want them to be and that we have more work to do and that there are persistent gaps that we need to continue to address between different groups of our students. As the mayor shared, we are up across DC as a state by 2.8 percentage points in English language arts and 2.5 percentage points in math compared to last year. And what is particularly exciting is that while more and more of our students are meeting the bar that we set for them, we are also seeing fewer students in levels one and two, the lowest two performance levels, which means that across the board, our students are making progress towards the, the bar that we want to set for them. So even those students who may need a little bit more time, we are moving in the right direction and supporting those students. Breaking down the results across grade levels, in English language arts, we are up by three points in grades three to eight and up two points in high schools. In math, we are up two and a half points in grades three to eight, but only up less than a point in high school math. And so that's an area where we need to continue to focus to improve and to support our students. When we dive into the results for specific groups of students, we see improvements from 2017 to 2018 for our students who are at risk in both subject areas and for English learners in English language arts in particular. Our students with disabilities are up slightly in both subject areas, but again, we have much, much more work to do to support our students with disabilities, both in overall performance and in the kind of progress or growth we are seeing with them. When it comes to our different race and ethnicity groups, we see gains in both subjects for our African American and our Hispanic Latino students, as well as Asian students, and gains in math for both students of two or more races and for white students. Finally, I'll just note that our statewide participation rates remain above the federally required level of 95% when we look in general across all subject areas. This means that the information we have shared is based on our, all, all of our students um, from broad and comprehensive participation, which is really important to make sure we're getting the best information possible to support all students. And so with that, I will turn it over to the Chancellor. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, Superintendent King, Councilmember Grasso. I am pleased to be here with all of you today um, to share DCPS's 2018 park results. Can we click. Hey. There we go. Uh, this year, DCPS made significant gains on the level four and level five rate in both ELA and mathematics. DCPS increased in ELA by 3.2 percentage points and in math by 3.1 percentage points. Across DCPS, 35.1% of students are meeting or exceeding expectations in ELA and 30.5% of students are meeting or exceeding expectations in mathematics. We also saw a reduction in the number of students scoring at level one and level two. The percentage of students scoring at level one or two decreased by 3.8 percentage points in ELA and 3.3 percentage points in math. We also saw gains across the board uh, with particularly strong gains in our middle grades. In ELA, we saw improvements in every grade from three through 12. However, uh, students in seventh grade, I'd like to call out, increased 8.4 percentage points in ELA. In math, we saw improvements in every grade uh, from three through high school. Uh, students in eighth grade improved by nearly seven percentage points in math. You know, for the last three years, Mayor Bowser has put a focus and an investment on our middle schools, and I believe that we are now seeing uh, the results of that uh, emphasis. So thank you, Mayor. Uh, 
In ELA, uh, we saw improvements in almost every subgroup, including uh, black students, Hispanic students, and at-risk students. In mathematics, we saw improvements in almost every subgroup as well, again, including black students, Hispanic students, and at-risk students. Uh, and then I'm pleased to highlight that schools across all eight wards experience gains in both subjects. Overall, 69 schools made gains in ELA and 72 schools made gains in math. 33 schools made gains of two percentage points or more in both ELA and math. And you can clap for that. <laughs> And I'm proud to say, again, that uh, five of those 33 schools were middle schools. We had Deal in Ward 3, Hardy in Ward 2, Jefferson in Ward 6, McFarland in Ward 4, and Stuart Hobson in Ward 6. Nine schools had double-digit gains in ELA. Double-digit is major. <laughs> Uh, and I want to highlight uh, some schools across the eight wards. Uh, Simon in Ward 8 saw a 12 percentage point increase in ELA. Jefferson in Ward 6 saw a 12 percentage point increase. And finally, McKinley Tech in Ward 5 saw a 28 percentage point increase. We had uh, seven schools had double-digit gains in math, and I'll highlight a few of them. Uh, Bancroft. In Ward 1, wait for it, saw an 11 percentage point increase in mathematics, Bancroft. Congratulations. <laughs> Ketchum in Ward 8 saw a 12 percentage point increase. Banneker High School in Ward 1 saw a 16 percentage point increase, and one school saw double-digit gains in both subjects, a middle school, and that was Hardy Middle School in Ward 2. I'm pleased of those results. I sure you, I'm sure you share my excitement and enthusiasm for the progress that our students have made, and I'm going to turn it over to Scott now to talk about the public charter schools. Uh, thank you, Chancellor Alexander. Um, Mayor Bowser, thank you for your introduction. Um, I have three points to make. First, as we've seen, public charters, public schools in Washington, both charter and DCPS, are continuing to improve, and that is great news for students and families. Um, in the case of charter schools, this is the 11th year in a row that our students have improved, first on the DC CAS and now on the park. You can see the line showing the DC CAS. And, and the red line, when we switch to park, is park level three and up, because that's probably the closest approximation to what DC CAS was. We now measure ourselves against level four plus, And you can see that since we've been offering the park, we've seen that steady growth. Um, this steady growth tells us we're on the path to ensuring that every student is getting the best education. Of course, we have more work to do, and we will continue to do our part by continuing to improve educational options for students in the city. Second, public charter schools offer families lots of options, but more importantly, they serve all students. Every year, public charter, school student, public charter schools are educating more at-risk and special education students, and this year, these students, along with their peers, increase proficiency in both ELA and math. So this shows growth from last year to this year in the percentage of students who are proficient in English language arts. And you can see that in every subgroup, at risk, black and African American, English learners, females, males, Hispanics, students with disabilities, and whites, uh, we saw growth. And similarly in math, we saw growth with every, um, every group other than English language learners where there was a small drop. Um, we saw a lot of improvement 
More than 20 public charter schools in grades 3 through 8 improved in both ELA and math by more than two percentage points. These are the most improved schools overall. Um, Harmony School of Excellence uh, improved um, by a cumulative percentage of more than 26%, followed by Basis DC, Friendship Woodridge Elementary, Inspired Teaching Demonstration School, KIPP Lead, KIPP Will, and Chavez Prep at Cesar Chavez Public Charter School. This next slide are our top performing and most improved high schools. So Basis and Washington Latin were by far our, our highest performing high schools uh, with English language art proficiencies 84 and 74 percent respectively. The most improved public charter high schools were Friendship Tech High School. I know we have some friendship folks here. And Thurgood Marshall Academy Public Charter School. I would, note, I would note that both of these high schools are located in Ward 8. Excuse me. Um, so the next, the final two slides are our highest performing public charter schools serving grades 3 through 8. The first is in, um, in English language arts. And we can see it le leads with basis, followed by Washington Latin Middle, Latin America Montessori Bilingual, Washington Yu Ying, Inspired Teaching, DCI, DC Prep Edgewood Middle, and three KIPP schools, KIPP Lead, KIPP Promise, and KIPP Heights. I, I am really impressed by the fact that every ward in the city is represented by these top 10 schools, uh, with the exception of Ward 3 where there are no charter schools. Um, we're showing that every school, every ward, students in every ward, can perform well. In math, um, we, uh, uh, there's something quite, quite stunning. Of the top three um, performing public charter schools in math in grades three through eight, all are KIPP schools. Um, and I would just point out that, that the, the highest performing school, public charter school, is located in Ward 7. And the third highest performing school is located in Ward 8. Those are, those are scores that compete with schools anywhere in the city. And rounding out that list is Basis, Kip Spring in Ward 5, Washington Yu Ying, DC Prep, Edgewood Middle and Elementary, Kip Quest, and Washington Latin Middle. Thank you very much. Well, thank you once again to our public charters, our public charter DCPS, and our public education leaders for DC. Thank you very much. And so, I also want to acknowledge our Ward One Council Member and Zoe, who have joined us. And we have uh, some time for questions before we go outside, where it's very warm, uh, to celebrate uh, the, the ribbon cutting for this beautiful school. And I should say, uh, we've also been joined by Bria Public Charter School officials who will uh, share space here at Bancroft Elementary. Welcome, Bria. Okay, press questions first. Yes. Uh, can, I, can you join me, uh, Kang? For DCPS or Aussie, um, this year a lot of uh, the DCPS high schools have come under increased scrutiny. Do we have any sense of how schools like Anacostia, Ballou, um did this year on these tests? And also, I haven't gotten a school by school breakdown yet, so. Okay. I apologize if you sent that. But. Yeah. Yep, so I'll invite the Chancellor to, to add, but I'll just note that um, right now on our website you can find full LEA and school level results for all DCPS and public charter schools. You can see those on downloadable spreadsheets and on results.ac.dc.gov, uh, comprehensive 
comprehensive visual website where you can find all of this information. Um, I should also note that parents can expect individual student score reports to be coming home to them um, in the next week or two. Schools will receive them all this week, and we're looking forward to getting those in the hands of families. Um, and I'll let the chancellor speak to the individual schools. Yeah, you asked about Baloo. At Baloo, we saw a 0.5% uh, percent increase in math and a 6.1 percentage point decrease in ELA. You know, I am very confident that Baloo's new principal, Willie Jackson, who is a native Washingtonian and an actual graduate of Baloo High School, um, will begin to turn things around at that school. He's done so in other capacities for us across the district, and I'm confident he'll do the same there at Baloo. I'm with WAMU. Um, a lot of uh, residents that I, I spoke with at the Chancellor Search mentioned that they were concerned about the achievement gap growing or closing and uh, kind of looking at the data that you, that you have from the park exams today. Um, what, what's the trend that you're seeing with that and, where, and what are the plans to kind of close the achievement gap that you're seeing? Certainly everything that we are uh, doing in schools are to raise up the achievement of every subgroup uh, in our city. Uh, and the interventions that we've seen uh, that the chancellor mentioned in our middle grades uh, demonstrate that a focus on, um, on certain grade levels uh, can have an impact. Our focus on uh, boys of color, our focus on uh, young girls of color as well, we think will um, show improvements in all of those areas uh, too. But it's a large and complicated question uh, that I know that the public charter schools are focused on as well as, as DCPS. I think that the, the, I'll ask the superintendent to talk more specifically about the numbers, but we don't see the gap grow. Um, with, with these data, uh, and so we'll continue to work on interventions that we think will help uh, our, our, all of our subgroups rise. And I'll just note that for students with disabilities in particular, um, we have taken a number of steps under the mayor's leadership um, that we hope will lead to results in the coming years. In particular, at Aussie, over the last two years, we've granted $8.7 million in new funds um, in specifically to improve outcomes for students with disabilities. Um, those were granted for the first time last year, repeated again this year, and we are looking forward to tracking the outcomes of those programs and hopefully building on, on where we see improvements happening and learning lessons about what we need to do across the board to improve these results. Mayor Bowser, you ran in 2014 on the slogan, Alice Steel for All. We're seeing a lot of, on these test scores, improvements in middle schools. How much weight do you put on these scores for that, and where do you see in terms of where middle schools stand and where do you see middle schools still need to go in this city? Have you achieved that yet? Well, I ran on many slogans. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to step to the side. And one of them was delivering a fresh start for the District of Columbia. And uh, just like uh, with the improvements that we see. We're seeing steady improvements in many areas uh, in our government, and we're very proud of that. Uh, I think that you heard, uh, and our goal is that parents feel confident in more middle schools across the district. Uh, and the numbers that I, uh, the, the numbers of middle schools that were mentioned uh, demonstrating double digit achievement uh, will make parents more and more confident in those schools. So our goal uh, in talking about uh, the things that were offered at Alice Deal that parents liked, a challenging curricula, uh, having opportunities for language and challenging math courses and extracurricular curricular activities. And we have been able uh, to invest in those offerings across the city. Uh, so we will continue uh, to work with each one of our schools. I'm going to ask the Chancellor and Scott to speak specifically about the middle school gains um, that, that most stand out. 
Thank you, Mayor. I highlighted those schools earlier in the slides, um, but I do want to add on more to the, to the middle school piece and provide somewhat of an explanation for the gains that we saw. I think first and foremost, we acknowledge the fact that uh, leadership makes a difference. Uh, we um, changed the leaders at many of our middle schools over the past few years, and we think that has had an impact, as well as the supervision for the principals in those middle schools. Those schools are now led uh, by um, Superintendent Natalie Gordon, who herself was an award-winning middle school principal, and we are seeing the uh, effects of her leadership for leadership in those schools. I want to highlight some of the middle school investments at this time. Um, definitely the mathematics courses that the mayor mentioned are true. More students in our middle schools now have access to algebra. Um, the extracurricular, act extracurricular activities range from archery to robotics. Um, and, you know, we have uh, just a wide variety of course offerings, um, and I think that that has a lot to do with, with the results that we see coupled with the leadership. Scott. Yes, you were next. Uh, did Scott oh, want sorry, to respond? Scott. Yeah, I, I would just add, I mean, some of our highest growth schools this year were middle schools. Um, Friendship uh, Woodridge, both elementary and middle. Friendship uh, Woodridge Middle was the highest growing um, uh, in math, in the, uh, in the entire charter sector, uh, basis, harmony, a couple of Center City school, schools, Center City Brightwood, um, Center City Congress Heights um, were, were high growers, Howard University Middle School. So across the city, across wards, um, we're seeing strong growth. And as the mayor said, that brings more confidence um, in families choosing to send their children uh, to public middle schools. Hi, I wanted to ask, um, oh, my name's Noah Katzman, um, and I was wondering um, if you looked at the achievement gaps between the intersection of students who are both students with disabilities and at risk, um, because both of those student groups have large achievement gaps um, on their own compared to the regular population, but does Aussie have any idea about students who have both a disability and are at risk, how are they doing with the regular population? Yeah, we would be happy to follow up with you with more specifics. Um, we do look at, uh, we try and look at results from multiple angles and to think in particular about um, how we can do more at Aussie to support uh, educators and students. But we also know that our LEAs in schools are digging into results and we're excited for principals and teachers to all be looking at not only different groups of students and intersections of those different groups, but also how to support individual students. Um, and also for families and, and parents to have that information. Um, again, the individual student score reports that we send home have not only the overall park score for each student, but also more detail on which parts of the assessment students did better on and which areas they may need more support on. For example, are they doing better when it comes to informational text or nonfiction or literary text or fiction? Um, and that kind of detail is helpful not only for families, families to know so they can follow up with the school with questions, but also again for schools and educators to dig into as they're planning for the upcoming year. Okay, thank you everybody. Please join us outside for the ribbon cutting. <laughs>